Today, and we are going to talk about enthalpic and excluded volume interactions. So we've already taken off, uh, take care of the entropic portion, but now we're going to get into the enthalpic uh, portion of our free energy for polymer swelling. So we need to kind of think about uh, a number of different interactions that are possible in our system. So we need to look at monomer-monomer interactions. We need to look at monomer-solvent interactions and solvent-solvent interactions. We've kind of detailed previously. So one of the ways that we could kind of um, think about monomers, so a polymer is just like a chain, right? And it's composed of monomer units. And you could coarse grain, just like in the physics model, you could coarse grain monomer units to like beads. Um, so you could treat beads as hard spheres, and then you could treat uh, these interactions between monomers as similarly, like your Leonard Jones potential. So we all know our Leonard Jones potential from our piece at one and from, uh, from uh, lecture one. But just to kind of remind ourselves, so we have our potential energy here. So at distances less than RM, you see this energy shoots up. Why? Because the, uh, our spheres are overlapping, the electron clouds are impinging on each other. That is not good. So we're not going to, basically, we do not want high energy. We don't want to be over here. This is our equilibrium distance where our shells are just overlapping. And over here, our distances are way, 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 way apart. So the energy is essentially zero because we're not even feeling each other. So uh, again, short distances, overlap electron clouds, uh, slightly negative approach zero, too far away. So that is what we're kind of uh, looking at. So we're going to remember, lower energy, more favorable interaction. So in poor solvents, uh, the monomer interaction is more favorable. So remember this kind of uh, table. So interaction, monomer, monomer, interaction, monomer, solvent, interaction, solvent, solvent. So we are going to find that for basically alpha equal to one, alpha greater than one, alpha less than one, we will find, remember, 0, 0, 0, alpha greater than 1 here. So again, our polymers, so this interaction will still be 0, but this will be basically negative, favorable. Here, this will be 0, but this will be positive, 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 and 0, 0. Again, assuming that those uh, interactions are just the same uh, solvent as interacting with itself. So those are kind of our energies that we've kind of dealt with previously. So. For a poor solvent, the modern monomer interaction will be more favorable. So we'll see a well and we'll see a deep well. For a good solvent, so they want to, because these monomers want to interact with each other. For a good solvent, it's going to be shallow or even positive and create an energy hill. Um, so we'll see that uh, come out in a second. So remember, these interactions could be positive. They don't want to interact with one another. So, or again, relative to your monomer solvent interaction, depending on how you're treating your chain. So one way we could find the probability from our energy landscape, U of R, which is the same thing as U of R is equivalent to our Leonard Jones potential, Leonard LJ. Uh, remember, we said that for, if we take an energy landscape and take the inverse, we could find the probability. So this inversely related. Basically, it's not really an inverse, it's an exponential. So we take the exponential of our energy landscape, we could find the probability of finding two monomers close to uh, uh, one another. So at very large values r, the energy goes to zero, and that's the exponential of zero is going to be equal to one. Uh, so we'll see how that curve looks like, the probability curve on the next page here. So this is the probability of basically monomers finding one another. So it's just going to be, again, low distances, probably zero. Why? Because our, our monomers are overlapping. That's not good. Our equilibrium distance is the highest. And then, again, just mathematically, this goes to kind of one because your r values explode. They're extremely, extremely large. So this is not um, basically super, re or not re super realistic, but we want to kind of take into account and get rid of this um, uh, kind of value of one. So to find the excluded volume, we're going to use this Meyer F function. Um, so if you take um, a higher level thermodynamics course uh, in graduate school especially, you'll work with this function before. So most of you, it's probably the first time you've seen it. So the Meyer F function, if we go, not this one, here we go. So if we go up here, our Meyer function is just taking that probability function, so E of R, and just subtracting it by one. And then the excluded volume, so it just subtracts the probability at large values. All we're doing is kind of just normalizing it. But the excluded volume is the negative integral of my Meyer F function. So the excluded volume, as we see here, is just going to be this area under the curve. So the cool thing uh, that we're going to see about excluded volume, and remember, excluded volume kind of tells us uh, Actually, we're going to see down here below, but we kind of hinted at this earlier. Um, 
is telling us basically how hard or how difficult it is for these kind of polymers to rotate and basically how much um, like the effective sphere, right? So if I have a bulky side chain, my effective sphere is going to be larger and it's going to extend my polymer. We've kind of looked at it in the context of C infinity and also alpha as well. Like how much is it going to, what is the effect going to be on our R squared distance? Um, so the excluded volume is related to the net probability of finding two monitors close to another. So for no, uh, let's kind of for the next interaction. So the excluded volume is effective volume occupied by a monitor and the interactions of the solvent. So again, it kind of can, it encapsulates both the monomer monomer interactions, so your C infinity, plus that interaction with the solvent. So obviously, if my alpha is large, if, the, if my alpha is greater than one, if I'm interacting with solvent favorably, enthalpically, I, my ex effective volume is going to be larger. Why? Because I want to expose more of those monomer units to my solvent. So let's kind of take a look at certain values of excluded volume. So what happens is our excluded volume is again for no interactions or sort of for a theta solvent, basically where our monomer solvent interactions are zero, my excluded volume is going to be zero. So, and that is for the theta condition. If my monomer monomer interactions, uh, uh, basically, or you know, like I said, monomer monomer solvents, also for theta, we know monomer monomer is equal to zero. If my monomer monomer interactions, if they like to be uh, next to each other, so relatively, if they're low, if they like to be next to one another, what is my excluded volume going to be? Well, it is going to be less than zero for net attraction, for a poor solvent. Uh, and for my monomer, monomer interactions that are large, relatively speaking, to, again, to my uh, monomer solvent interactions, those, uh, excuse me, uh, these are negative, oh, excuse me. Uh, so for my monomer monomer interactions, again, relatively speaking, so for my monomer monomer interactions that are uh, larger than my monomer solvent interactions, we are going to have this, uh, basically my excluded volume greater than zero for net repulsion for a good solvent. So let's take a look um, basically at what's happening here, uh, at what this equation is telling us. So let's look back here. So if my, excuse me here, let's go back to one page. So this is my excluded volume. So if I look at a curve like this, excuse me. If I have a curve like so, and my curve looks like this, so there's a little well, and it's positive, what's the value of my excluded volume, my V? It's the negative integral here. So here, my, basically the net, you know, if we look at kind of the shape of this, this negative component versus the positive component, the net integral is going to be positive, right? So this is going to be positive, but my excluded volume is the negative integral of this. So I'm going to have a less than zero excluded volume for this interaction. So what is that telling me here? It's telling me that there's a high probability of basically finding a monomer monomer next to each other. So the monomers like to be next to one another. Thus, this makes sense, right? When looking at these values for excluded volume, uh, less than zero net attraction between monomers. So monomers want to be next to one another. So again, the interaction between one and another is very negative relative to the monomer solvent. So that's when I have a poor solvent. If instead my curve looked like this, and I, my well was huge here and then just a little like this, uh, if my F Meyer curve, so this is my function of R. So here, this is telling me basically, looking at this problem, you know, again, it's effectively similar to probability. My integral of F of R dr is going to be equal, it's going to be negative. But again, the excluded volume is the negative integral. So my excluded volume here is going to be positive. Now, what is that saying? Again, <laughs> my excluded volume, my sphere of influence is going to be larger because it's going to be hard to find monomers, monomers next to each other. They want to repel. My chain wants to extend. So the distance basically between, again, that excluded volume term, between my monomer units is going to be larger. For here, for the case where my excluded volume is negative, we are going to see that chain coiled up tightly. So the distance is kind of negative. Uh, excluded volume relative again to your uh, kind of ideal chain state, right? 
where you're just in your theta solvent. So your excluded volume, your kind of little sphere here, shrinks relative to your V sub zero. So that's how you kind of want to interpret these curves. So depending on your F Meyer curve, whether that integral here, because again, this value is negative, we take the negative integral, so this is positive, it's saying that the probability of finding a monomer unit next to one another is going to be very low. So that means our chain is extended. Why? Because these interactions are high, we don't want to be next to each other. Our monomer solvent interactions are much, much more favorable. So our chain extends. So thus our excluded volume, the area, you know, basically that total area kind of between each monomer unit is going to increase. So uh, this is uh, basically kind of uh, very similar, uh, kind of describing the same thing. So attraction between monomers increase, excluded volume will still be positive, smaller magnitude, less swelling. The attractive part, uh, same magnitude in a theta con uh, condition. If the attraction increases further, volume will become negative, the polymer coil and collapse in on itself. So again, it's all relative to uh, that ideal kind of chain state. So that's kind of the key aspect of this excluded volume. So we're looking at this F Meyer function. We're seeing, okay, are these areas relatively, you know, if these areas are equal, are V equals zero, we know we're in the theta state. If the probability of finding a monomer at some certain distance is large, and this integral is positive, then we have an excluded volume that's negative. We know that monomers, monomers want to be next to each other, that that interaction is very, very favorable, so the polymer will collapse on itself. So it will kind of coil up even tighter uh, than in the kind of this state, again, where you have this excluded volume initially. And if your F Meyer function, if your excluded volume term is really, really hard to find a monomer next to each other, there's a low probability, then our excluded volume term is large, positive, because our chain is ex fully extended. And we have a large excluded volume term because we have to take into account all of the monomer and solvent interactions. So the chain wants to extend, expose those monomer units to as much solvent as possible. So your chain size will effectively grow. So we are going to derive how this ch uh, changes as a function of our solvent quality uh, in the next video. So more on the enthalpic interaction. Part two is coming up soon. So thanks. And I will see you all next time. Have a good one. Bye.